Oh, welcome back to Third Phase, another episode of The Boys. This pretty special guest who's come on today, um, Big Brad Shields, obviously from New Zealand and here to chat with us and delve into a story and who he is and what he's about. So uh, thanks for coming on the show, bro. Thanks for having me, lads. Yeah. Pleasure to be on. Listen to a few episodes, they've been pretty good, so I thought, Thanks, why not, man. hey? Big podcast, like, do you listen to um, a lot? I, d- I do when I get time, like, because the thing over here is when you drive, yeah, yeah. Like, people drive for an hour, two hours, like, to training. And it's nothing, yeah, like, if you like, want I don't care, like, bro, yeah, like, like yeah, so there was, a, there was a bit, you know, when I was going back and forth into camp, I was yeah. driving in, so oh, I was, as as was listening to a bit of stuff in there, but, like, whenever I get a chance, like, yeah. it just depends what... What I feel like you do the Joe Rogan six <laughs> six minute. Uh, oh, those those, 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 those gone forever. Yeah. Like plus like, thirty like, seconds, plus thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Wasting my driving time. Yeah. Like. Oh, he makes what like it's ten all, million a year from his podcast oh, or some shit. It'll like be it. from the ads, bro. People yeah, must pay a fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably why his um, carnivore diet right now. Yeah, you know how all his ads are like meat products. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, bro, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do this month? Yeah, that's bro. That's what you know. You only start somewhere. Yeah, really need like. Even if you only need like a few thousand. What was what was B um Bialo saying? Because he does obviously he's on Spotify and yeah, yeah, songs. Yeah. He was saying that you can just put it on repeat. So every night, time, yeah, yeah, every time it goes, it gets a view, it gets a view, it gets oh, a view. Yeah, so yeah. over over twenty seconds or something, yeah, or yeah. over thirty seconds yeah. you have to listen to before he gets some money. <laughs> So somebody so he does it every night or something. Oh, I don't know. He was trying. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's what he tries to do. Or maybe I'm not too sure. Like turns the mute set. And just puts it on repeat. Yeah. All night. I'll just buy like a separate iPhone eh, just to just like have it song, playing in the background. Eh? <laughs> the whole day, yeah. <laughs> Every day, yeah. Put it on the keyboard and charger. <laughs> well, first, first episode without your beard. <laughs> yeah. it's, been a, it's been a big one. <laughs> Mate, it's a difference, eh? Like, um, I don't rec- my, recognize myself in the morning anymore. My missus certainly doesn't either. Yeah. I think the best videos was on uh, Lou's story. You know, seeing Charlie seeing you oh, yeah. for the first time. I thought, I thought she reacted pretty well, to be fair. Like, okay. I, I thought there was going to be tears and then... Yeah. Once she's like, oh, mummy. And then I looked over at Lou and she's crying. I'm like, why are you crying? <laughs> Charlie's the only one supposed to be crying. Yeah, yeah. So she was actually like an hour later was sweet and actually played with me more. Yeah. Didn't have a beard. So that was weird. Eh? <laughs> but Tyler Skux is back, eh? <laughs> the theater, how, how, long, how, long, uh, how long has it been since you've not had a beard? Uh, well, since I clean shaved, yeah. t- 2012, I think that the day before I met Lou, she actually met me like this. Got yeah. Yeah, and then um, that's how you reeled her in, eh? <laughs> Just that young buck, eh? Let yourself go after that. <laughs> <laughs> Let myself go, yeah. Just got too comfortable. Um, and then 214 was the last time I was like, nah, I'm going to shave at the end of Mighty 10 Cup that year. So I was like, nah, see you later. And kept the kept, kept the beard going. I actually had a bet. It was a bet, eh? Yeah, so me and Mikey Kainga, yeah, so yeah. He, fellow uh, Hurricane, he was a club tripper, that fella. <laughs> um, yeah, he um, we made a bet who, whoever wouldn't touch their beard. Mm. You get a watch at the end of it, but as you can see, um, I still don't have a watch. <laughs> <laughs> but he reckons I cheated, eh? Because I I shaved a bit of my sideburns, but yeah, didn't get my watch. But yeah, I still won, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the bed story started. Yeah, well, and so uh, what's your story, man? I know you you're strong, faithful of, of Wellington, grew up in Low Hut, and kind of what's your yeah. what's your journey through? What's the background? Through, on, yeah, so. Are, you, um, et cetera. Well, I wasn't always in Wellington, so I wasn't born in Wellington. I was actually born in Masterton, but it's just a coincidence because my, my grandparents were there, um, and my dad's mum and dad, but my, my old man was in the army, so we sort of travelled around New Zealand from when I was born to, to about eight years old, mm-hmm. and we lived in the States, um, in Texas for a year from seven to eight, eight sort of, seven to nine, somewhere around there, um, and that's when we settled in Wellington, but... We were just down for the weekend at my grandparents, so that's why I was born in Marston. So obviously not too far from Wellington, but yeah, we've been in Palmerston North, Christchurch. Um, I think my parents lived in Auckland for a bit before I was born, um, and then and settled in Wellington in 2000. Uh, been there ever since, and yeah. man, I love love my time in Wellington now. I think mm. um, we'll lose from Nelson, so she's kind of like trying to drag me back down there <laughs> once we finish up wherever we wherever we finish up. But you know, I think Wellington's always sort of home, and Lou's been there for a fair bit as well, so. She kind of considers that home as well, so yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a bit of a background with my growing up, yeah. And then, and then, I guess rugby wise, then you obviously at Taita for all of those years. Mm. I think we've had this conversation before in the past. Like, it is probably a lot more difficult, kind of making through the ranks a little bit when you're not at one of the bigger schools. Did you find that you know, um, coming through? Or I think the thing that because there's a few of us that there's three of us that yep. or four. Um, 
that ended up playing Super Rugby from Tata, which yeah. is like which is like a massive achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the, that that's right. The one thing was was getting into the system, and I think once we were in the system, like age grade under thirteen, Wellington was, reps, it was whatever, okay. it was mm-hmm. kind of a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. But if we weren't in there, sort of until eighteen or nineteen, it's probably going to be a lot harder. Um, but yeah, it was like trying to compete with the big schools was just like like like, like holding that was just mm. there's no chance. I remember you guys played a eh? the year I left school. You guys played tighter. Oh yeah, they like actually made it into spanked the them like, like by seventy points or something. Yeah, first division, but you guys had just left. Yeah, we just left, so we were gutted. Eh? Yeah, wanted to play these guys, but um, yeah, no, it was like we we just trucked along. It was like I think we were the lowest we went was Div four, and I think we won that, which we were stoked about. Like that was like our Div one winning. Like, yeah, like, pump, but. We didn't really care. We just went out and wanted to play. Like I think when you've only got when you got like we had one first fifteen, a second fifteen, and like three three like weight divisions with under fifty five, sixty fives, and that. So there's only four teams in the whole school, and that's pretty crazy for for a college. But um, yeah, it was tough. But I think we just I don't know. We just enjoyed playing rugby, and I think Wellington College came knocking on my door when I was about sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> so now nah, I took all my mates at school, yeah, so yeah. sort of settled and. Um, I was pumped. So me, Mikey Kaying, obviously, um, not sure if the Nigel R. Wong mm-hmm. ended up playing for the Reds um, and for was it the Rebels or the Brumbies as well. Um, and then George Bauer, who's now oh, with, the, with yeah, the Crusaders. Yeah. So he was he, down in Dunedin. Uh, did down in Dunedin for a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. So he sort of came out out of nowhere, really. He's like um, Stortland around like first 15 in there and then just bam, like came onto the scene. Yeah. So he's like, he's ripping hard, which is good. So you know, it's, it's not impossible for all those kids out there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it might be. Well, you're, you're you're walking proof, aren't you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. Like, um, I think it's just that, you know, if you're keen to make it, it doesn't really matter where you come from. You know, yeah. if you put your mind to it and you know you have some good support in that, then mm. you know anything's possible. So it's cool. Yeah. So where's your rugby influence from? Is your your old man a big big rugby nut as well? Um, yeah, he he didn't really play. T- he played rugby, but he sort of got injured heaps. Say eh? like because he was in the army, so he played a bit of softball. So that was where my softball background came yeah, from. Yeah, like I had to sort of decide oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I left school and I was like, oh, I think rugby's probably, you know, I think, not that I didn't enjoy softball, but I think rugby was, you know, that was the passion and mm. that was where I wanted to go. And he's the one who got me into rugby and um, my parents are big, biggest, my biggest supporters. And, um, you know, they sort of, they didn't push me at all to do anything, but obviously I think my dad was like, come on, you can play rugby Sunday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and my uncle as well, uh, he was, uh, Liam would know, um, the coach of the, Tony Prems when I left college and sort of he sort of helped me to get into a you know Stokes Valley where I'm from mm. um, again didn't really have a, a premier side so I mean I think if you want to crack on especially when you leave school it's almost it's that time where you need to go to a, a premier team and sort of kick on from there but yeah to, to answer your question my old man was probably the biggest influence not that he was the greatest rugby player but I think just his like commitment and determination all that sort of helped me get get through those first few phases yeah. Well, you got to play in basketball as well, eh? Like, you know, good or just <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you know, like we we grew up playing yeah, basketball yeah, yeah. as well. Like that was pretty cool. Bro, I think like um, for me, like I just wanted to do any sport that I could, eh? And um, I think I was you know not too bad at most sports, and you know it's funny. Eh? Like I remember those days. What was it? Between like thirteen and sixteen. Yeah. So I was actually surprised that I made the rep team yeah. um, with this guy, and I was like, "Shit, I don't even know what I'm doing here." Right? <laughs> but um, big Brad in the post, just bus. like yeah. you know, getting buckets, getting rebounds. Bro, I'll never forget because I don't really, I don't really understand basketball. I do, I do understand it, but I didn't really get it at the time, like because tighter, we didn't really have any moves. Yeah, as such, just we like just kind of just get the ball in the hoop. <laughs> yeah. And I remember playing with this guy and we running the running a play. He came down the court, whatever it is, putting his hand up. <laughs> And um and I just shot to the top of the key because I saw it was open and he's like, "What are you doing? Stick to the play!" And pushed me down. I was like, "Oh!" Shit. And then he just drives to the hoop and puts it. I'm like, oh, "Sweet, then take my take my spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my play." <laughs> so he's just trying to understand it. So, no, it was cool. Like um yeah, like just try and play everything and just be amongst it. I think my parents started to get pissed off because I I couldn't get a job because I had no time for it. But um. <laughs> Because you're doing like sports. Yeah, like yeah. Friday basketball, Saturday rugby, Sunday will be softball again or something like that or touch on the weekend or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And do you have any siblings? Yeah, so I've got a younger brother. Yeah. Um, he's We're all like sort of a year apart, younger brother and an older sister. Okay. So I'm, I'm the middle yeah. child, yeah. 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 And then I guess going on to your rugby career, your first season of the Lions where you come through and then... Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we... um, So you, you, 
You got to 2010, eh? It was your first year. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think we were all together. Yeah, so I came in, um, so I was like just working in that, like doing academy. But I think halfway through the 2010 season, there was a few injuries. Yeah. And I think it, when Jamie Joe had just left to do the, the, Landers. Land, the Landers and Waddy came in and mm. he called me in halfway through that 2010 season, like for the last sort of six or seven games or something. So that was my sort of first opportunity and like to play of these, which I think Reggie was playing like he was training full time this guy was playing so it was pretty hard back in those days eh? like yeah. there's some big you know, heavy hitters when you like who was right, still like, like surgeon like Rodney um, been around. yeah Rodney Rodney's he was my yeah. first um, he was my first locker locker mate Mazer was playing quite a bit because yeah, like when the All Blacks yeah. would like only have the, their one competition eh? like end of year yeah. tour but they'd have it at the end of the lines or something like that Up so Nakatini Nakatini he's right. playing in the States eh? yeah yeah I saw that um, so it's cool, bro. Like, and 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 you kind of forget, as a young guy, you're like it's actually really daunting coming in for the first time. Like, mm. you fit, you're training at the start of the week, and you're like, you're playing in the weekend, and it's your first week there. You're like, holy, like, you're like, but but your kid, you don't really, you just want to throw the ball around yeah, or yeah. just carry or whatever. So it was pretty daunting, I remember. But um, it's good having guys like Leams and that that you play with. Yeah, you know, you know like, we like grew up playing with each other. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Since we were like under twelves, you know, like playing yeah. reps. Yeah, play, like you play for Stokes Valley, I play for Patoni. That was like the crunch, 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 crunch game of the year, is it? Yeah, I remember that game in Stokes Valley. Do you remember it? Oh, I was so <laughs> filthy that we lost that day. I was <laughs> yeah. pissed off. I swear your ref like rigged the game, mate. No, no, no. I was just the Laney Park will yeah, catch bro, you out there. Eh? <laughs> honestly, I remember going home and I was just like filthy for like two days straight that we lost that game. I was like, man, I hate these guys. I hate Brad. I hate my <laughs> stuff. These guys. <laughs> But it, it is, man. Like, you look at it, it's crazy how you, like, end up, you know, building a relationship when you're young as, and you don't really think about it at the time. Mm. And all of a sudden, you're, like, 10 or 15 years later, and you're playing in the same team on the other side of the world. It's yeah, like, yeah. how's that even possible? You mm. never think. And it's, it's funny, like, my old man, um, so Jacob, Jacob's old man, Mike Umanga, went to school with my dad. What? In Parkway and Wainui. Oh, so, in um, Wainui and Parkway? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, I think he, I think my old man was either a year older or a year younger, but they all played rugby like my, my uncles and that. So they know each other. So they got a photo after, and it's like two generations, like mental that hate, end up in, in, the, in the same place. You know, Jacob's obviously still a young buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He's like where we were when we first started out. Yeah, eh? yeah, bro. Yeah. So uh, I was just thinking about it last night when I was talking about my, to my dad. He came and stayed. He's like, it's just funny how things end up. You end up on the other side of the world mm. together, or watching your sons play on the field, which is which is crazy. You got to write that. Like that's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird, eh? Mm. Oh, so um, I guess, I guess you know when you come on as a young buck, you see these guys like like Rodney, you know, Nazo, all those boys, and then kind of fast forward ten years that you guys are now those. Guys, do you feel like is that something you guys feel that you're like, well, now, and you put that's there's been time in between, but like, I guess now these young guys come in going, shit, man, I'm sitting next to Brad Shields, or especially uh, when you were hundred. 100 game hurricane you know, you I reckon know. for super rugby yeah probably like um, that's probably you don't really think about it too much but you know that's your because like it, I think the coaches if the coaches are doing a good job they're grooming sort of the young guys to become the leaders mm. and be the senior guys and I think you know with the change of the hurricanes culture um, I'm not sure obviously Highlanders did really well in that space as well it, it was massive trying to recruit young guys to becoming you know the more experienced like sort of leaders I guess of the group but um, sort of coming here it's almost like a fresh start because even though you know you've you've had all the experience and you've played yeah. all these games it's almost like you're the you're almost the new kid a little bit Yeah. so um, it's kind of weird in that sense I don't know what you feel like yeah I guess I just feel like you've been around long enough to know what rugby is mm. but you're still the new new guy here so you're trying to make mates or you're trying to kind of like earn their respect in a way yeah, you know? yeah. just by like playing well and and things like that, but yeah, I, I think I think you nailed it on the head yeah. with that one. Um, is, are there any guys when so as you are leaving the Hurricanes, are there any guys that were coming through where you're like, oh man, he's gonna be a good leader, or he's gonna, you know, like, yeah. you're like, oh he's gonna he's gonna be really good. It's weird, like, um, I suppose because we had such a dominant leadership group in the Canes while 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 I was there, and it was sort of like um, trying to groom guys, up, but. It's weird the guys you see now that, that other guys have moved on, like sort of us have moved on, who actually steps into that role. So I'm not sure what it's like at the moment, but someone like Duplessis, Karifi, um, like he was sort of in, in and around the scene, um, not really coming and trained for a little bit. 
he's with the Lions and stuff like that. But man, like in the last sort of year, just given an opportunity, special, you know, yeah. grows confidence, yeah. grows voice. Like I think he was he was captaining the Lions for a bit there. Like he's done a little bit for the Hurricanes. Like someone like James Blackwell, mm-hmm. he's a cold boy, eh? Yeah, yeah good boy, boy, isn't he? Cold. Smart, very Onto smart. It, bro. Yeah, like so. He, he actually went back, bro. He was a head boy. He was a head boy. He right? went. He was a head boy and repeated. Oh, true. Yeah, repeats like me, bro. <laughs> Led the <laughs> way, man. Another chance. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do. That. I, I, I couldn't do that. Nah, you weren't made for it, man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the rugby wasn't wasn't necessarily worth it, but um, yeah. But like even like guys like James Blackwell, who you know, um, it just they're just like sort of. Born to be a leader, like you know, you got your arties and that who you know they're gonna be leaders anyway. Like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just part of their makeup. And I think guys who are like who sit in the sit in their ranks quietly, just nut away at their job, and then when it's their chance to jump, they they take it. And I think some boys are like, especially James, like he's one of those guys that lead by actions, you know, not necessarily by words first. Mm. And that's what you want. That's the biggest thing. Uh, so man, hundred hundred game or hundred plus game career for that was actually right. It was a hundred and two games, a yeah. hundred caps. So yeah, I think Wikipedia needs to sort. It out, <laughs> bro, that's you, man. You, that's you're you, the one. Bro, you're, you're, you're the one. Who, you're the one who goes online, looks at it. Hey, hey, I scored a try in the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> update, update, update. That's you, bro. That's you. No, no, no. Don't even know how to work a computer. Eh? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Well, pretty storied career, like pretty great career, man. That you had had at the Canes, little roller coaster. But like you come on with a franchise that was always kind of the bridesmaid for long. Yeah, you kind of come on almost at the golden era era for the Hurricanes. You know, all the big names yeah. that we had in the two thousands, and then they're kind of on their way out. The likes of Ronnie um, again, and then you're part of this new rebuilding group. Mm. And you, what was amazing is seeing it like. But what was it like being a part of that, seeing that journey over that? What, nine years? Won it? Nine years, eight Twelve years? Twelve to uh, 18, yeah. yeah. Nine, nine seasons. Not easy feet, man. Like, especially in Super Rugby, man. Like, not <laughs> Seven yeah, seasons. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going one too many. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro, it was cool. Like, I guess you don't, like, you, you don't really think about it until you're out of the environment because mm. you're just trucking along yeah, each yeah, day. But day by day. Yeah. Mm, I think if you look back on it, like, um, we had a real young team in 2012 and I think there wasn't much expectation because of sort of those older guys had sort of moved on or, you know, you had Mark Hammett who came in and wanted to switch the culture around a little bit um, and create a little bit of a different culture. Um, but they obviously identified a group of guys sort of um, from our 20s mm. group, like, like like myself, TJ, Bodie. I mean, Colsey was still, you know, t- mid-20s, so he's still a young fella, mm. not anymore. Um, <laughs> You know, guys like that, uh, Reggie, um, who sort of wanted to capture and take along for the ride. And I think, I think, the, you know, you kind of saw like the first like 12, 13, 14, you, not necessarily going to win. I think not, we didn't know that we wanted to win. Like that was our point. Um, but I think it was a building phase and we certainly went in the right direction. And then we played these guys in 2015 and lost. Like yeah. I think we sort of, I think we knew we could have won, but we didn't 100% believe it. It was sort of like a shock that we, had had such a great season. Um, and I think these guys obviously came into their, their own towards the end of that season. So, like, I, I don't know what it was because we sort of had a, I don't know if you say on paper almost, like some of the names we had, you're like, oh, that's sort of, yeah, I would back our team. But I think we just didn't have that deep-seated belief which um, we're trying to build. And, and since we lost that, like, the next day, like, it was kind of like it snapped. We're like, no, 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 like, we, we can easily win this. Like, it's not like it's... Um, it's obviously going to be tough for the next season but you know that deep seated belief and I think that's where we're at at the Wasp at the moment is there's a little bit of belief coming back so that group that they they sort of brought through um, started to believe you know and then that filters through to the young guys you know if if you you start getting your standards high everyone starts to build on that and then all of a sudden you've got a a professional performance culture um, that you know you can you know your expectation is to win and perform and I think you know that's where we got to which was it was so cool to see if you're like looking back on it now to where we started from to and, and Lima's in the Lima's been in the same boat with the Landers like to see where you can go and take a group um, and Boydie sort of took that to another level when he came in um, which was awesome but yeah I suppose the Landers were in the same spot eh? yeah and I guess just like you know from afar you know like I'm obviously from Wellington and just you know, like all you guys are my mates, so to mm. kind of see that come through is is pretty cool, and to see the growth and and things like that. But do you reckon, like, you know, how when you first come in as a youngster, 
Do you reckon it's crazy when I remember Hori coming down to um, the Landers in 2013 and he was like, he always used to be like, just enjoy every day because before you know it, it's going to be over. And now like we're, we're sort of nearing that end, you know, like we're what, 29 now. And it's just like. I'm still 28, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you look 16, Next though. Month, yeah. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Don't have to get ID at, at the clubs now. Um, but you, you know how they always say it goes by so fast. Do you reckon it's just like, honestly, just. Like you've blinked and now we're here. Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. And I think Corey Jane said that to us when um, we first came in as well. Like same thing as what Corey did, make the most of the boys. Mm. And I realised like when I left the Canes because I was the captain for the year. Like the, the skips gets up and does like an end of year speech, and I was like, I thought about it as I was talking. I was like, man, make the most of the day every time you walk through those gates. Because you, yeah. you don't know when it's your last day, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and it just hit me then. Yeah. It's like far out. Like that's and now you're that you're that the guy. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously, you know, like um, you could easily stay and play for your whole career, and and like in New Zealand or for the Hurricanes because it's the team you love, or it's the it's what you're passionate about. We grew up watching and supporting, mm. but you know, obviously, you want to try new things and try different teams. And my situation is obviously a little bit different. Um, to some other guys but yeah it's like it's, it's sort of like man rugby careers aren't long at all and when they're done they're, they're done <laughs> that's it you can't be like oh I might try one you know and come back in a year or yeah and sometimes it's not even by your own choice exactly bro yeah and, and you've seen it done. so much now like it's scary you see how much it stops like with the concussions and injury and stuff like that and not, yeah. not getting a contract like yeah like, that's a big one too yeah. you know like people forget like some guys are stopping because they're not gonna you know, like yeah, I know everybody wants yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I just remember like vividly those guys saying, and like at the time, eh, like you're just like, yeah, whatever. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm over here for there. And then I'm like, you know, like we're passing on those same messages, and like, you know, I'm sure like the young guys are like, oh yeah, yeah, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Shut up, I'll man. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, see the boys rocking up with those new J's, and you're like. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember those days. I remember going shopping. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> blowing the blowing the money up. What What did you spend your f- first uh, pay packet on? Um, do you remember? Well, I think I um, because I because when I knew I found out I got signed, and because you know how they backdated the first year, so you start getting paid in November. Yeah. So you got paid over twelve months, uh, fourteen months rather than twelve months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I actually went and got a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest that's no 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 because it was coming into like Christmas, Christmas New Year's yeah, 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 RMV yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like Wellington and I think it was like I think it was 1500 or 2 grand yeah, and the like, bank obviously knew that I just got a, I had to show them my yeah, contract yeah, got a job. Yeah. Um, so I was just in town like spending up and then I maxed it out <laughs> at RMV and that but, but I was lucky like so that was my part of my first paycheck was straight, yeah. straight on my credit card eh? I was like would that also be the stupidest thing? What was the, do you have the sh- most nah, stupidest I'm thing st- you ever bought? I bought a car, eh? Like, <laughs> stupid. Like a real, like kind of like an expensive one? It was like, It was expensive for me, yeah. Like, um, it was how a, much was it? It was it? a ter- Ford Territory, I think it was. Oh, those are nice. But it, was, it wasn't a new one. It was like, t- it was like 2007 or 2008. Yep. This was in 2012. Okay, oh, so you're still, young here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, still, still young. young. First like, track. 2013, 20. I think I bought it, yeah. And just turn yeah 2021 20, 21, 21 yeah and i knew i needed a new car but it, like I, I thought i needed a new car you know <laughs> <laughs> and i wish for i wish i just kept kept the same car that i had but um because part of it was my missus i met um when i met her and i was driving my car it wasn't a bad car it was a mitsubishi lignum like a station wagon and it's just the because because the, the stereotype for a rugby player or a professional sportsman is like oh you should be having like a flash car or whatever yeah. and it was like the panel of the bonnet was like different color to, like. to the rest of the car yeah. <laughs> and um it's from Tata, bro that's what you get yeah. um and my last car just blew up so i was like trying to make the most of it and his sister goes oh is that the car you're driving <laughs> and i was like oh <laughs> so I went like it didn't straight away but I was like oh in my head I wanted to get a new car yeah. you know, I got it and it was like Christmas and I was like oh Christmas present to myself and I went and bought this territory and I took it to see Lou it was like we were seeing each other and she, was, she looked at like oh nice car and put the dog in the car and the dog stood on the middle thing and like pierced all the holes <laughs> in, the, in the new like um, whatever the material was and I was like, no, it's all good. Don't, don't worry, it's all good. 
But you were just looking at all the money you just, just spent on your, on your new car. I think it was like, I think it was eighteen grand. Eighteen yeah. grand. I didn't. I didn't think I, I didn't pay it off. I didn't like pay for it straight up. Like yep. I was paying it off. But yeah, I was like, I was like cringing, I was so gutted, and then. Like, it just went downhill from there with that car. It was just the worst buy ever. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, bro, it cost me more. Eh? Like I sold it for all right, but the, the best car I bought was a Prado, Toyota Prado, 1998. So after yeah, that, yeah. mate, after that, it was sound. Eh? Yeah, so I've learned my lesson already. That's why I drive that humble Hyundai now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. That's the one. Yeah. What's yours? What, do, you have, do you have a like, stupid, most stupid purchase? Uh, nah, probably the dumbest thing I ever done was I think I lost like four grand at the casino. Oh. <laughs> like a long night uh, <laughs> trying to chase greatness. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's the dumbest shit I've ever done. Um, yeah, I think so. I still got a, I still got a deposit out in Dunedin, um, somewhere. Well, at the casino there, but that'd probably be the dumbest thing. A deposit. Well, you know, deposit at the casino. I went there and just deposited all my money. Oh, into oh right. Table. Oh, okay, okay. I see. <laughs> um, Charity. Yeah, so. Nah. <laughs> Any purchases? Nah, nah, nah. I don't. I wasn't really like. Just the, just the need and the yeah, octagon, is it? Yeah, a few deposits and not the octagon. <laughs> yeah, a few deposits down there. Vault 21. <laughs> nah. Um, but yeah, nah, probably that. Stupid idiot. It's funny though, like you think, like it's all part of life, though, like learning curves. Yeah, yeah. But man, some things are just stupid. Eh? You <laughs> switch, man, if, I, if I went back now, I'd do this differently. Yeah, like, yeah. Do this differently. Oh, this just comes of age, though. Exactly, it? bro. And but like, it's like probably that because you're just so young, like 22, yeah. like getting, you know, a lot of money's coming. And you're like, you already spent it in your head a little bit. Oh, I, don't, I don't know about a lot, but <laughs> you, you <laughs> might be able to help. <laughs> Cheek. <laughs> I uh, listen. I was funny. Like uh, you guys listen to Gary Vee. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. just watched some of his yeah, stuff because so, he's like, big on that, right? Very yeah. massive on that. <laughs> and every time I see him, I'm like, "Wow, oh, that was me." <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I still, still got, I still got seventy more years to go. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's his big thing. Eh? Stop yeah. buying stuff for people you don't yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To impress people you don't like. It's just you just want to be cool, eh? Yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah, bro. And I think I think like legit like coming from Tyda. Like and and my my family's like yep. you know didn't have you know we, we like that mum and dad did like so much for us and like paid for me to go on my s- sports trips and stuff like that but I mean money wasn't like just, you know we we sort of just made it by mm. so sort of like you know when you first get a paycheck you're like man what can like you don't know what to do with it you know like I remember twenty bucks when I was in the academy yeah you're like from seven to eleven like no petrol. How am I going to get all the way into Wellington from Stokes Valley? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like ten dollars in my pocket, like you know. But you, you make do, obviously, with the support from your parents. But yeah, man, it's like so when you get it, you're like, what do I do with it? Do you all at once? Oh yeah, go to Courtney Place. Yeah. When you have the get 20, a credit card, yeah. yeah. Buy a credit card. Yeah, that's not, yeah. Uh, all the twenty dollars when you're like sixteen, and you can make that stretch for like for two her, weeks. Uh, eh? But now yeah. I'm like, Wait, what am I going to do with twenty? Yeah. <laughs> Or if you went to if you went to town, you know, like you'd only have twenty dollars, and like I, I can't remember, like I was like, man, I never bought drinks, but huh, we always seem to I get drinks. <laughs> like, I, I, or like I was like, man, we must have stole how many drinks, you know? Like people put their drinks Mine's down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. Eh? That's <laughs> it. You too, eh? Preload before you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big preload before you go. And then, yeah, coyotes, eh, bro? Hey. <laughs> The grand ladies in the oh, grand man. That's a that's a, the coyotes. coyotes are, that's a throwback. Eh? What's that? The Bangalore Polo Club now is it? Nah, that's the wait. Coyotes is one of the outside, but yeah, you know where um not Bangalore was. Uh, what's the, you know where the I grand know, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next was to that. next. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> How early were you going to town? I think bro, I, place. I think I think I went once when I was under eighteen, but. Yeah. I was a lie. I know, legit, bro. I was a goody good day. I was like, I think because most of the time I always had something on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Like oh, I always softball. had like a softball game or a softball yeah. tournament. So yeah. I didn't really like. You were I mean, all the way. Yeah. 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 I still like going to like parties. Party and house parties. And like 15 and 16 yeah. and stuff. Um, but yeah, legit. I think I think I only went in once. Mm. I'm, I'm a bit of a pussy, eh? Yeah, like. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm like scared of like if I go to the bouncer and, and he'll like, like he's like nah I'm like yeah. oh yeah. like that'll haunt me bro yeah. to, to this day you know so I'm um, just a pussy yeah I need to 
It's a bit of a jellyfish, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no backbone, bro. No backbone, <laughs> it's you, man. I'll get there, eh? Still got seven years, as I said. You, you did have that big decision, you know, obviously, that when you decided to come over here, and then there's yeah. obviously a lot of controversy <laughs> that, came, that came with that. Like, what was it like in your mind? Because obviously, people, when you kind of read it all, there's between the NZRU and the RFU, they were kind of bickering over all of that. Yeah. Like, did it feel like you were like with this porn a little bit because it kind of seemed that way there was like you. uh i didn't really know what like it was weird because i never really i don't think i'd really been exposed to like that sort of media before yeah. and yeah like everyone sort of had their opinion and i i guess i can see where people are coming from like um, they don't agree with it but at the same time like i think if uh, and i've said it before like i think if anyone was in my shoes and they held the opportunity to to play at the top level like you know i could have try to keep cracking on in New Zealand but whether it would happen or not mm. you know it's out of my control I could only try and play well but yeah like I think if anyone sort of had an opportunity in a job or something like that to to go to the next level or tr- you know yeah. go see somewhere new then I'm, I'm sure they would take it as well and I think the biggest thing for me was the support from my family and my my friends like and especially the rugby community because I think generally like I think we get it eh yeah I think everyone in like the Canes and that like when I when I told the boys I was going um, you know, everyone was so supportive, and I think you know understood the reasons why. And like the coaches were like, you know, I would would love for you to stay, but look, we, we'll, we'll support you no matter what. Um, and I think that was really cool. Like the, the people that mattered the most were real supportive, and that was cool. So it made the transition a lot easier. Well, there was a bit of banter going back and forth, yeah, but yeah. that's all part of it. Like that's part of footy, and you wouldn't expect to get off scot free. Yeah, but. there is there is this weird thing, isn't it? Like kind of Joe Public expects almost blind loyalty from you yeah. uh, to your team but probably on the flip side there's a business that sits behind that team yeah so, so when it's time, when it's it? so when it's like when the player leaves they're unloyal and then when the club like sacks off the player or whatever then it's just it's just a business it's, decision yeah, yeah like, yeah. like no one, that's just business yeah yeah and so that and like, that's probably somewhat the public almost felt with you isn't it that you're, yeah. you're a New Zealand player like yeah. you should be for us, you're not playing for them. But kind of what I think what a lot of people discounted is that you have English heritage, like your parents. Well, my parents were born over yeah, here, so yeah. that, and my grandparents live, you know, I wouldn't say most of their life because they, they sort of got out um, just after the war. Well, they were quite young when the war was happening, but obviously things weren't settled. Um, so they sort of made their way to New Zealand. My, my granddad was an engineer, but my 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 mum's parents were also from, so they're all from over here. I'm, yeah. I'm the first we're the first generation to be born in New Zealand. Yeah, um, so I guess like, yeah, it's sort of like still brought up in New Zealand and yeah. well, well, I think it's, it's brought up as in, a Kiwi. In a way, it's really no different to uh, guys representing the Pacific Islands, right? Who are born in, and, and, and yeah, New Zealand. Yes, and yeah, bro. And, and that's how I see it. I'm like, well, yeah. isn't that then the same, in the same token, that yeah. it's the same because you're, you're, you're representing your other side of your family yeah. who's, who's English? 100%, English. 100%. And I think like, I think the thing with the NZRU when, you know, when they, when they said no, um, I don't think it was really their decision to say no. I think it was just because England's a, not a tier, like, because they feel yeah. threatened by a tier one nation. Like, mm. it's sort of like, if they, you know, it opens the floodgates a little bit. Mm. And, you, I mean, you saw Pete Samu literally, oh, like, five weeks later, eh, or, or whatever, yeah. got, got selected for Aussie. So, I guess, in a way, it sort of opened the door a little bit. And maybe it was something that needed to be explored, maybe. Mm. Um but then again, you've got the rules in, in Super Rugby only allowed like three international capped yeah. players outside of New Zealand and the team. So I guess it wouldn't really work too well. Um, but yeah, like, uh, just I, yeah, I just think, well, as a fan, you know? I just think, well, don't we yeah. want our best, like the most elite players in the world if they have a chance? Like we want to see them playing at the well, top. But you look at football, different. like over here, like you can play in Europe you can play in Spain yeah. you can play anywhere but you still come back and play for England yeah, yeah, you still yeah, go yeah. back and play for Brazil whatever it might yeah. be you know it doesn't matter like but it can only be better that your guys are playing for the top you know, uh, you know especially like you know, like those South American teams none of them play in South America they're all playing in Europe and yeah, England yeah. and then they're taking it all back yeah, you know exactly and I mean you can see like um, you can see guys like um, actually Joe Merchant for the Blues yeah that's right like guys are starting to Come over here for a little bit of ex- uh, over to New Zealand for a little bit of experience, like a see how Super Rugby is, and I think um, I think Eddie's a sort of an advocate of trying to get guys to have at least one season in Super Rugby, mm-hmm. just to sort. Of, I know I was watching the game the other day, like a t- potentially a little bit faster. Like over here, is obviously we've talked about it before, yeah, like I get, a bit I, more physical, maybe a bit more of a kicking game. Yeah. 
a um, bit more structured where Super Rugby sometimes throw the ball around, the defence might be a little bit loose or whatever it might be, you know. Yeah. So exposure to that can only make you a better player up from, from my from what I reckon anyway. I don't know what you can Yeah, I can I can understand that. I was watching the game of Billy the other day and he was just like yeah. This is rubbish. This is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, what? He's like, they're just playing touch rugby out there. Look at these offloads. I was like, oh, to be fair, I kind of got yeah. the point. And like, there were a few knock ons, but this was at the end of the game. And I was just like, oh, bro, it's not too bad. Like, I reckon you'd like it out there. He's like, nah, look at it, man. It's just so loose. Like, and I was just like, <laughs> bro, that's because it's dry. Like, that's uh, the conditions do make yeah. a big difference, eh? Like, we're lucky the last sort of three weeks. Yeah. We've, we've been, been nice. legit good weather. Usually this time of the year, Christmas times. Yeah. Well, since I've been here for one season, it was like cold and wet. But it's just a, you have to play a certain way in that yeah. in that weather. You the, can't. The season has almost in like in bits, isn't it? like because early on when you start August September, it's dry. So yeah. like, the rugby's different, and then once it starts like November, Winter. December, January, it's like you're playing different whole styles different of rugby. Yeah, 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 yeah. The game just changes, you know. Yeah. And then uh, and then now we're back. Like the weather's getting a bit nice. All oh, the weekends are nicer, and the boys are the it's boys are raining for yeah. me. <laughs> the boys are playing well, man. Yeah, yeah going good, man. <laughs> it was, hey, was a, yeah. I think the boys are enjoying, like, it's, it's funny, eh? Like, sometimes it just takes a win. The series win was obviously a big win, but, like, sometimes it just takes that to just boot your confidence levels up a little bit. And, like I said earlier, belief is, is a massive part of rugby. Yeah, I was saying to Lima last night, like, watching it like, when you guys were up by quite a bit, then they've uh, lost the score. And kind of the last, of the last few seasons, you kind of have, there's been a bit of capitulation a little bit, but yeah. then, like, there was a quick reply and the boys got up for it. Well, that's it, like, because we talked about it yeah. earlier in the season, eh? Like, <clears throat> when other teams score, it's down. Yeah, damn, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we do now? But now it's like, yeah, like all right, right, we know yeah, exactly what we're up yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think we've got some, like, we've got some really good leaders, eh? Like, yeah. And some good experience in there, too. So we're all sort of, sort of feeding off each other. Um, and everyone's just keen, like, you can hear sometimes in the team huddles there, it's like, <laughs> Yeah. I think guys are genuinely like keen and yeah, genuinely yeah. care about the team so just want the best out of it so oh, it's just fun to be a part of it bro so you know playing for England like how how, how was all that like, awesome bro yeah. yeah like you know you like so stoked for you um, to come over here and then obviously get to the next level so you've made it to the next level and like how's, how how was your experience and hopefully more experiences to come yeah hopefully like just gotta play well for Wasps yeah I yeah. feel like I'm just I feel like I'm a bit rusty at the moment eh but yeah. How was that first? Well, that first because was it your first game or second game? You end up playing the All Blacks. Um. So. No, South Africa. Eh? Yeah. So I went to South Africa. So That's right, yeah, that was yeah, that, that was that the, was came the, on the, on that was the whole that was the whole yeah. controversy. Came in on at Lock eh? Yeah, bro. I was that on was the, the whole controversy about yeah. whether because then you were coming back to play Super. Again. Yeah. So that was the that was the weird part about. And to be fair, I didn't think I was even going to be considered for that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. You know, if I play well at the start of the well, season, maybe I get a chance. Whatever. I didn't even think it was going to happen. In the first year, I was just you know take the opportunity and see what happens. But um, yeah, so South Africa was it was it was crazy because I was used to it in a way. Oh yeah, like, true. Because we play there super rugby, yeah, like yeah. Um, although it didn't make and it all any those easier. Boys as well. Yeah, or like no, none of them really play there ever. Mm. Um, so a, a little bit of knowledge, but I mean not really. Um, but yeah, playing in the high veld. You know, where were the cheetahs again? Um, yeah, uh, Bloemfontein. Yeah. That was ridiculous, bro. But yeah, to come off and like. <laughs> Joburg, that was like come off at half time. I uh, got on at half time. Man, it was it was weird, eh? Like, because when you come off the bench, like you're straight into the action. There's no build up. You're like straight into it. So I didn't really think about it until after. In the second game, I got to start, and then I think that's like because my parents ended up coming from here, came to yeah. Bloemfontein, and like when you sing the national anthem, and I I could see them across the thing, um, which was quite cool for me. But I think. It was the Twickenham when I f when I first played in Twickenham against South Africa in the Autumn International. I was like, see Lou and my parents. Yeah. And I was like, far out. This is amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 80,000 people. Like, Twickenham, it is an amazing stadium. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, full. you don't realize yeah. until yeah. you're on the field, nice. all those people making a noise. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Like, I didn't, I wasn't like, man, I've cracked it. But I was like, man, this is like the this first what, big step into my, like, the next level that yeah. I've always, like, Wanted. dreamed of being a part of, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was really cool and then obviously the All Black game was, was second and there was a bit of media hype in that but I didn't really buy into it too much it's always good fun playing your mates though right. eh? I, I, yeah. it was weird because eh? it felt like sometimes in the game it felt like a training run because like you Bodhi at 10 like it felt like it was back at um, yeah, yeah, Rugby League Park yeah. in Wellington in a way like obviously it wasn't the stadium and stuff but it was, yeah it was 
it was weird and like he almost knew because he played against the guys for so long he almost yeah. knew what was coming or and obviously all like such a such a great team but it was just like it was a massive occasion for me and I think I got didn't I didn't get swept up in it at all but mm. again like it's anything you look back on after and you're like man that was cool like yeah who would have thought like I would never have thought you know starting my career at the Hurricanes even even 216 17 Someone said to me, "Oh, you'll be, you'll play, you'll start against mm. the All Blacks and Twickenham." I'm like, "No, no, no, shut up!" Yeah, like, that's yeah. a joke. That's sick. But it happened, and I was like, "Far out!" Like, so how how did it come about? Like, was it kind of like a twat? Or had Eddie been in your on your on your phone? Like, no. Nah, so I sort of um, I got to the point where I was like, oh, I need to need to move on and try. I knew I had the option because I was English, so yeah. I was like, oh, I'll see what happens if I go to England. Like, I've got a f- couple of years to try and get a. F- get a few caps if I mm. I didn't know like no one said to me you're going to make it if you come over or anything I was like I'll just take a take a leap of, leap of faith sort yeah. of thing um, and then once I signed Eddie sort of um, I had a I had a conversation with him it was just a general conversation nothing about anything and he just basically said to me like if you play well we'll look at you yeah. and I was like okay sweet pretty simple, like yeah. I think my manager back in New Zealand sort of the call out and he, I sort of wanted to get an idea of where to go like if they wanted me to go anywhere, if they want to see me do a specific thing, or yeah. what do they want to, and just like play well, we'll look at you. And then a few weeks later, or a few months later, they got the, got the call to go to South Africa, and I was like, what the? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, so that was that was really cool. Yeah. Pretty quickly, mm. yeah. I guess over the years, you were in the eyes of the of the All Blacks, kind of, was that always, was that in the back of your mind, like part of that decision making? I get, or like, was that that point when you're going, well, that, that door's closed now, this is my new... Yeah, it was a it was a funny time um, because I was like Charlie was born in November, mm-hmm. um, so the Barbars were. I got asked to go and play in the Barbars again. How sick is that playing? Uh, it's, the, it's the best rugby. Like any rugby player, if you want to put that on your bucket list and you get a chance, don't turn it down. <laughs> um, How good's getting that envelope? What envelope? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it. Special players. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. You, you no, didn't. Just the beers. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. Nice envelope, yeah, it was good. Probably wasn't as thick as yours, but nah, I mean, everyone gets to say, mate, bar bars, you know, like <laughs> such, I would do it for free, bro, like 100%. A weekend, like, okay. what did you do too? I did two weeks, bro, yeah, because we so we went to um, we've gone off track a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, we'll, sorry. So yeah, we yeah. we played at Wembley, South Africa, we drew against them, which was like the craziest at week Wembley. at Wembley, yeah, oh, that's cool, mental week. They shut the top tier off, so there was only 50,000, okay, only, yeah, I was like. Well, oh, imagine what it's like when it's full. Yeah, because it was that 90, I think. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. massive. Um, and then we went to Prague for the day later, went to Prague for two days yeah. and played Czechoslovakia. And oh, was Reggie on your one? Yeah, Reggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and yeah. Fats, Michael yeah. Fats yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, went there and then went to Ireland and played uh, Fiji. Yeah. Uh, also, what's Ulster Stadium? I don't know. Belfast, is it? Yeah, Belfast, yeah. yeah. Belfast. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So we Sorry if we're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in there for the for the last week, bro. It's, it's, it's cool, way. Eh? Like that's what I mean. Like I would, I would do, it, I'd do it for free any day. Just yeah. so it's part of the experience. And and I think the thing about that about rugby is you make so many cool relationships. Like, mm-hmm. like some of those guys that were in the Barbars team, like Ruan Ackerman, didn't get to catch up. But um, you know, you got the. Dupree brother playing against at 10 like it's random how you yeah. play against them and then you play in the same team yeah. it's like you just you does it change your mind because you have an impression of somebody and then like, you just only play and then you're like yeah. oh and then like they must be so different <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest say hey, there's those guys that you're like nah I don't like him just because <laughs> just because the way he does Please. on something on the field yeah. or you're like you don't know him at all from a bar soap you're yeah. making a pure judgement just and off then the you, way he plays yeah, yeah. And you meet them, you're like, oh, I feel so bad. I judged you, bro, but you're <laughs> like the man. You're, you're the man. You're a good dude. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Everyone does it, bro. But yeah, so that was cool. Oh, yeah. I forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just around that, that uh, the, the All Blacks thing. So kind of you were oh, in, that, yeah, in that mixer yeah. and kind of the, your your feeling and how that worked. Yeah, so I, um, it was weird. Eh? Like, obviously, went into camp a couple of times, um, come back out, play for the Canes, but. There's a, there's a window there where I didn't really have much to do. I had a couple of meetings, but that was about it. Um, had a meeting right up until the last minute. But yeah, I think I just sort of, I shut, I'd closed the door on there and I yeah. sort of came to grips with like moving on and taking a different yeah. route and a different opportunity. And um, I guess that was it. Once I sort of, once I had the support for my family, that was it. I was keen to, 
to move on. And I think the timing, like I was talking about before, Charlie was born, so I didn't get to go on the Barbas trip, but there was the, um, I think there was a few of those guys that played on the Barbas trip that ended up playing that France game uh, towards the end of the year, I think. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's a weird sort of scenario that I couldn't actually be involved at all because cause I wanted to be there for Charlie's birth. So, so yeah, so it was, a, it was a bit of a funny time, but I guess, yeah, just got to close the door and move on. And um, with the support, it was made it easier. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a bit of bit of cheek from them then trying to cl- trying to have not let you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess the, the, you know you get protective in your business, yeah, like you yeah. say, it's a business, and if if you want someone, then well, whether they wanted me or not, I just it's, it's you had already me. You had already lived live with that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, yeah. So that was it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's what, worked how, out alright for me. So well, yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. actually sick, you know. Yeah. Like I know, I guess from because I've been a player. Like, I'm a player myself, but, and like when you get to see guys like go to the next level, you're actually really stoked for them. Like no matter what country it is, you know. Like obviously you're born and bred in New Zealand, but like to see someone achieve their dreams and go to the next level, like I think all us players kind of get it. You yeah. know what I mean? We just we just like. Ah oh, man, we're happy for you because you get to go and do something and that you know, like very yeah, yeah, yeah. few people get to do. Hundred uh, percent. Every yeah. everybody wants to play at that level. That's it. Like every, you want to you want to take yeah. anything you can to the next level. Like like you look at like guys who want to go back and play for their countries. Like um, like Charles was talking about him going to play for Tonga. Like yeah. they just want to play at the top level mm. again. Like at the at the at that top tier like international level. Like that's the dream of of a rugby player. You know. And it's tough, like, um, like you see guys moving forward, and like you see it in Super Rugby in all different levels. But like we look at, I look at our twenties team, for example. Like some guys, unfortunately, didn't get to crack on from that, so they would see some of their peers playing Super Rugby, um, and you know, there's a little bit of jealousy in there. Like, and then, you know, some of our twenties or some of your guys in Super Rugby go crack on to the All Blacks or whatever it might be, and you're not quite there. You're like, ah, oh, damn it, like. It's it's like I think it's just because you want to be this, you want to play at that level so bad, you get a little bit jealous or yeah. you, you're a little bit gutted that everyone else sort of pushes on. But I mean, that's all part of professional sport. There's no doubt about it. But you, like, for me, I just wanted to find a way to sort of get, yeah, get the crack the, mm-hmm. that top scene. Which um, yeah, because that's I mean that's what drives you, it motivates you, isn't it? You want to be with your boys, mm-hmm. with your mates that you grew up playing with, and then to be at the same level, yeah. whether it's against them or with them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you had how many? What ten tests now? I have got eight caps. Yeah, yeah. 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 Touch wood. Hopefully, like yeah, there'll be more. Hopefully, more hopefully more. I get some consistent rugby and yeah. um and try and play well. Like I said, I feel like I'm a bit behind the eight ball, but yeah, yeah, I'm well, enjoying it. Like that's the I'm enjoying being back out on the field. Like you know, that's the the first thing I wanted to get because you, when you get injured, you sort of you go for a phase of like oh, I don't really like oh, is, oh, like all of that sort of thought goes through your mind, and just to be back out on the field and enjoying it, I think is the first step to. To playing good rugby, yeah. And what's it like in the England camp? Because you you wouldn't have known many. I guess you maybe crossed paths with some of them. I didn't. I, I played. We played against a few of them for the twenties. Like a lot of them played yeah. in that final. Yeah. So without like you know you knew of them, yeah. not really knowing them. Mm. Um, but I knew because I was I already knew I was coming to Wasp. So like launches, um, Dan Robson, with, um, Nathan Hughes was there at the time. Elliot Daly was there. So I sort of migrated towards them a little bit. But like to be honest, like oh, Jason Woodward was also in camp oh, when I first went in there, yeah. so he's sort of hot yeah. boy. Yeah, very hot, upper hot, yeah. not quite lower hot. <laughs> he can stay there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah very. Like they're so good. Like the management was so helpful. Um, the players, you know, seemed so great. Like welcoming me in. Like because uh, like, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't even think I was going to play in the first game. So to have their support like meant a lot. Just to yeah. just to give me confidence to play. Yeah. Um, because the situation was oh well, that was the biggest thing I was worried about was yeah. being accepted by the group and I suppose everyone you know going to a new job or whatever you're like oh what are people going to think of me yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah that was the biggest hurdle and I think they made it whether they you know whether boys like me or not like they made an effort and they felt like, they, um, yeah, yeah. Felt like yeah. welcoming like a, like another sort of family and that's the good thing about rugby is like you know you're, you're one of the brothers when you're playing for the team yeah. so and what's uh, uh, after our last uh, yesterday Six Nations game, old Joe Marler. Oh, you can, you can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> hey? <laughs> Someone do it to uh, me. He's, <laughs> he's he seems to be the best at doing like just getting under your skin. He's, but, like, he's last, a joker. Yeah. Yeah. Is he like that? He's, he's just like that person. Like, yeah, he's quite a funny bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's quite a funny bloke. 
I didn't expect to see that though. Like, <laughs> I would have thought like an international test because you know there's so many cameras around. But I mean, you know the banter that goes on yeah. with rugby, like like you get bum slaps and all that all the time. <laughs> me? Or, hey, <laughs> you, you gave me one yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so like I mean, I will take it with a grain of salt. But um, you know, it's gonna be, it's been a, already been a few like bit of an uproar about it. Yeah, really? Well, I saw yeah, one yeah. maybe twelve weeks. Possibly. Twelve week we ban for that. Twelve weeks ban. Well, I just read an article. I, I don't know. Obviously, we get. Well, are they saying the that sexual yeah. assault or something like that. Nah, nah. Like it's anything to do with the genital region, groping or twisting or whatever. Like there's actual like there's an actual. Was actual, oh, actual rule, rule, yeah, yeah. in it? Yeah. But I did read read an article this morning, and you know we don't we get told not to read the media or anything, but. Um, Alan Jones did say something about oh, he wants to see an action from World Rugby. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, it's a funny, bro. I mean, I thought it was funny when I saw it. Everyone was cracking up, but <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> just who you do it to. I really yeah. like if yeah. someone took exception to it, then yeah, I think probably fair enough. If, if Wales had won, he might have not. Yeah, so maybe. I don't know. <laughs> like if my like it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a laugh. If my yeah. boy, if like one of my mate, I don't know how close they are at all. Yeah, but yeah. If, like, one of your mates, I don't know, does something funny to you or gives you a sack tap or yeah. something like that. <laughs> A crack up. Yeah, laughing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, just also want to touch. Obviously, um, like I never went to a World Cup. I missed out as well. I just want to touch on that and just like how you got through that. And um, you know, obviously, it's a really difficult time. Um, I remember when I got the call, and I was fucking shit, man. Like I thought my world was over, but like I look back now, and it's you know something that I'm just like, ah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But like. You know, for you, how how did you get through that, and you know, are you still going through that, and and things like that. Yeah, it's just, um, it is it is real yeah. tough, eh? Like, um, because you in the mix, like right up until yeah. that last sort of hurdle, and for me, like injury, obviously, and and whether I would have been there or not, who knows? It, it is what it is. Who knows? Um, the injury obviously came at the wrong time, but I think for me, like, because I was still against a race against time, so in my mind, I still need to get fit. I still need to get fit. I still got a chance. Right up until that last minute, um, and then when I got told, "Oh, we, you, you, you know, we take someone else," or whatever the call was, but but be ready. So I got to be ready, you know, get fit and and be ready. So that was what I was holding on to. That, that little bit of little bit of hope that not 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 that you want anyone to get injured or anything, but that I might get an opportunity. Um, but so I got injured the first time, and sort of you know this is why I looked at shaving the beard. Yeah, so I didn't I didn't really um, I didn't really stop. And once I got injured, the next day, like, I obviously got a scan and came back to in Treviso for the pre-camp, uh, pre-World Cup camp, and I sort of just kept going. Like, I went straight into the gym, like, like can I bite? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do off-feet? And I just kept going and going and going, and then, and that was, like, it was fine at the time. I didn't really register. And then I obviously came back playing some of those pre, pre-warm-up games, and then I like, started to get a few issues because my foot was actually still sore. Yeah started to affect my my ductors and my pubis and and then I played a few games like not at 100% so I reckon I was probably like 90% um, but I just wanted to play because I knew if I was playing then I'd have an opportunity obviously had to take another few weeks off because my pubis um, and then I came back that Edinburgh game and like injured my foot and it's sort of like same thing again injured my foot and it sort of hit me all at once about the World Cup like I was like oh, like yeah. so because I sort of delayed it delayed it delayed it delayed it and then um, and then my missus actually said something to me about it she's like you gotta like you gotta do something about it because you're like you're not stopping you're you're getting frustrated at home you're short tempered um, all this sort of stuff like I some days like you, you know you don't really want to go to training but I'm still leaving at like 6 to go do just to get out and do something you know because I thought that was my escape and then I actually, she actually said that to me and then I was like, okay, I need to step back and like having a, have a yarn to somebody about it. I put things in perspective a little bit and he's like, you missed out on the World Cup. Like, it's okay to be upset about it because mm-hmm. cause ultimately that's, that was my, that was why I came over here was to be part of a World Cup, yeah. you know, and it didn't work out. So I was, I was sort of naive to think that it wasn't going to affect me. Mm-hmm. And then it hit me, bro, that second time I got injured. So, yeah. and I realized like, damn, I missed out on mm-hmm. potentially something that I could have been a part of. Again, whether I would have not or not, like um, that's that's nonetheless really. But yeah, like you say, man, it's like once I once I actually look back on that sort of period, I was like, man, I missed out. I, I sort of dealt with it, like you say, and you're like, well, oh, you know, things move on. Like, mm-hmm. 
you got to focus on what's next and put a plan in place for getting fit again and getting back out on the field and doing what you love. And um, and I think the silver lining for me when I got injured was my family, like knowing that they were there, like nothing was changing there. They were still supporting me. My friends still love me. Like it's not because you missed the World Cup. Everyone hates you. Like you know, like you think like, oh man, this expectation of me. I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to do that. Like my family, oh, you, you're supposed to make the World Cup. I know they'd never think that. But at the time, you're like, damn it. Like, and yeah. I don't know if you went through the same thing. Yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember we've talked about it before, you know. And you just, I got to a point and I was like, face it, sweet, gutted, real gutted, like real upset about it. Um, but I just had to put a plan in place, move forward, get fit and get back out on the field. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there's some 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 great players like like, like Lima, like that don't, don't end up going to World Cup, but do so many great things in their career. And the World Cup just doesn't it doesn't define you as a player or yeah. a person, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just one of those things that, at the time, you just it, really like, wanted you it. Want it. Was everything. Yeah, yeah. I want that. Like you want it. But, I mean, it comes around once every four years, so yeah. you know you might just miss the boat by by a, a hair, you know. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, so yeah, same thing, bro. Gutted. gutted. And, and so it, yeah. it tied into some of what. You, in terms of the oh, so the beard, yeah, the reason for the shape. So that was that was that was part of it. So obviously, I was I was uh, and 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 like I've said from the start, like um, you know, mental health comes in all ranges, all different sort of scenarios. Uh, whether you think your problem's big or small, um, it's still an issue. Like it can snowball, or you know, it could hold up, whatever. But yeah, that's why I shaved the beard. I was like, man, it got to a point where I was like, I needed a bit of a change. Mm. How can I change? And I th- for some reason, I thought of my beard. I was like, man, I might just change it and freshen up a little bit and yeah. um and I wanted to get involved with Lucy as I know Lima and Tom Cruise have done a bit mm. and I sort of saw them as like you know an opportunity um to help them with their awareness, um, mental health and um yeah, just whip off the bed and, yeah. and and try and help in that space. And it actually went really well. I thought the we raised over over three grand. Yeah. The boys came down and did a great job in supporting and helping with the shave and I think the day went really smoothly and um it's funny, I walked out of that like with Lou and I was like, Man, I feel refreshed. <laughs> like <laughs> honestly, you like you feel I felt like, like not only your beard, but yeah, like, just you feel like you'd like let things go. Let things go. Like I don't know if it was that's because sick. I built it up in my mind that um that that's what was gonna happen. Yeah. But I was like I felt the air on my face and I was like, Whoo Oh man, I feel good. Like yeah. I feel real oh, good, good, eh? Like so uh, whether it's a placebo effect, I don't know, but I mean maybe I'll just have a bit more of a buzz in my step now. So Yeah. I still grow a little bit of stubble back. I can't keep clean shaving forever. <laughs> yeah. Look stubble. good, man. Look good. <laughs> <They're> young skucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those days are over, though, mate, for all of us. Oh, bro. So, like, did you actually reach out to loose heads? Yeah. Um, so for I, help? Yeah. Like, yeah mentally? Yeah. Is that what uh, you're No, not, not. So, I, so I didn't meet. So, um, so Ralph, uh, the doctor for yeah. the Wasp, I, I don't, I'm not sure if players know this, um, but the RPA, I think you've got funding of two grand per player. To help in the mental space, uh, mental space area. So I don't, I didn't know that until he told me. So I, I connected with this guy, uh, with a doctor, um, and he basically just listened. Like he listened to all my frustrations, all my frustrations at work because yeah. I wasn't playing. Um, what was happening? You know, the boys, some inconsistent with performance. So it was like, how can I help? And I was getting frustrated with it. I was getting frustrated yeah. at home, like real easily. So. So that was, I, yeah. I went to him, told him what I was going to do with my bed and said it was a good idea. Um, and then, I don't know, I just sort of thought loose heads was, so I sort of connected with them and said, are you guys keen to do something about this? So, so yeah, but they do, they do help in that area. So if you wanted to, yeah. if you want some help, if you're a sportsman or even if you're not a sportsman, you know, any age, whatever. Well, how, how did you find, like talking about that, did you find that easy like, when you... Kind Once I started, help, eh, like just yeah, all because we because I mean when talking to Ralph, like obviously what whatever goes in there is confidential. So, but but he asked me like because I think Lou had actually messaged him and said, "Oh, Brad's like frustrated a little bit. He's, mm. Seems a bit different." Um, and as I say, on the scale of things, it's I didn't think it's not that, not that yeah. bad. Like obviously, um, some people are going through much worse stuff. Um, but in the, like uh, he's like, "Are you alright?" Mm. And I was like, yeah, "Yeah, like just need a blood test and I'm out of here." He's like, are you all right though? And I was like, oh, Lou said something. I knew it straight away. <laughs> Lou said something to him, and then I just like started chatting and like I, th- I think that was the the first, the best thing was just it, it sounded so stupid when I started talking about it. I don't know if you've <laughs> yeah. like been in that situation, but I started so so stupid. Some of the some of the things I thought were like holding me back, and I was like, man, it's not even worth like worrying about. 
but it's but worth getting it out. Kind of verbalizing it. Yeah, bro, you yeah, yeah, finally realised that. Yeah, yeah. Hard. Um, and then he put me in touch with the um, with the doc, and um, you know, it's just good to just I skyped him and called him, um, and you know, just put things into perspective, controlling controllables, all that sort of stuff that you know. But it's just good to be refreshed about, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it's uh, it's a little bit. You know, like even, uh, or when we all do it, like you give out advice, but sometimes you just don't take your own right. advice sometimes, right? I'm like, the worst for that. <laughs> like you'll tell anyone who yeah. asks, you'll be like, oh, yeah, dude, there's controllables, yeah. contr- you know, what you can control, all of that. And you're yeah. like, then you get the same, and you're like, oh, I'm not even doing that. Exactly, it's, bro. Yeah, it's hard to, it's so like, hard. You're in your own so, head a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. And right. you need you need direction as well, like education as well is massive. It's like rugby, like um, you, you expect to perform every week in and week out at a certain level. Your, your arousal levels are supposed to be so high but you're supposed to be so clear and some teams just expect that mm. and I think that's the biggest shift that that has come you know especially from being in New Zealand as well and I think it's a big shift that can happen um, at Wasp as well as that mental side of it like knowing when you're struggling in the not not necessarily off the field but key moments in the game like how do you mm. how do you uh, react to it like what's the plan in place what's the techniques all that sort of stuff like all, all helps and then you can transfer it to off the field as well um, makes a difference life outside of rugby what's your I know you obviously got Charlie and Lou like what keeps what keeps Brad going like, well that's that's it at the moment eh? yeah. like I think the um, I can tell bro the bags on your eyes <laughs> hey that's from yesterday bro the black eyes you can see um, nah she's been sleeping alright at the moment actually yeah um, but yeah, I think I think it's just because cause we come so far away, like families, and because I spent you know five or six years, five years away from my parents as well, like mm. sort of making up for a little bit of lost time. Like my um, my sister's got four kids, um, so it was mental four kids under five. I think. Oh wow! So she's a she's a trooper. Yeah, oh, um, she's a machine, bro. Yeah. So my parents missed out on most of them growing up. Yeah. So I think they're trying to make up for a bit of lost time with mm. Charlie. Mm. Um, so they're here most weekends, but. Mm. I guess it's, it's different, like, from being in New Zealand, like, I'd go, you know, you go diving on the south coast or, yeah. um, you know, you got your mate. I mean, oh. not, you don't have mates. Not the poaching. Yeah. Not the, hey, can you go past the sign, bro, all the way around. <laughs> oh, Jump in the truck. This guy, yeah, he's <laughs> one of those guys that says 10, but he's taking 30. No, yeah. no, no. I can't hold my he's breath for that long, bro. <laughs> yeah. In the conservation areas. <laughs> yeah. <those guys. laughs> yeah, like, I think you just sort of, the first sort of year, like, I don't know, Lehman's probably found the same just trying to find your feet and I think you know you start to do a few things that you used to like I mean I played golf a few times yeah. um, when Lou was back in New Zealand so, <laughs> <laughs> at some time eh? um, but yeah for me I think just like because you because you can get away for weekends or you can get away for the night like that's a good getaway like a I don't know even if it's just for the night and you come yeah. back the next day it's quite cool to drive an hour and a half somewhere I guess the travel's not so bad now is it you know nah. the, the South Africa trip or the big yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. Like we're, we're we're not away that often. No, we're not away. Like yeah. day trips, and we get weekends. Like like we don't have a game this next weekend. Yeah, um, two games and then another weekend off because we did because we bailed out of Europe Challenge <laughs> Cup. So, I mean, it's probably not a good thing that we're not playing. But yeah, I think the opportunity to travel as well. Yeah, um, that's something I know Lima's obviously been around in a way quite a bit. And I mean, when I was away with England, didn't really get the chance to. But I think that's something that we're going to look at doing. So. Yeah. I mean, you might as well make the most of it when you're here because um, eventually we're obviously going to end up back in New Zealand mm. whenever that might be. But, man, that's a, that's a 24 hours yeah. for your flight to get somewhere. If you could give advice to an 18-year-old Brad, what would you say to that kid? Don't buy a car. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, what would you say to that kid coming through the ranks? Enjoy it, eh? Enjoy yeah. it. Like, um, I think work hard. Like, for me, my, my, my mantra has always been, um, you know, talent only gets you so far. It's you, you got to work work for what you want, and I firmly believe that's true. Um, I think you've got to make sure you, you work hard, but I think, you know, the saying is work hard, play hard. You've got to enjoy what you're doing because, as we talked about before, um, it's such a finite time, you know, it's, if that's the right word. Yeah. Nice, bro. You've been reading oh, books. Oh, yeah, oh you Gary V. It's your podcast, bro. <laughs> nice, man. Um, yeah, bro. Time's, time goes short. Like, um, oh, goes quick, sorry. But yeah, like, just enjoy it. Make make the most of every moment. And, and, and if I said, you know, back to him, just, just make sure you enjoy what you're doing because it's not going to last forever. Sick. Hopefully, 
whilst we're sitting fifth at the moment, man. It's you exciting? Let's go. Yeah. We were doing all the numbers last night. Eh? Yeah. Bro, this, if they lose to them. Yeah. We're only seven points off second. Yeah. So, like, they need to drop this. Yeah. We need to win. Oh. Nah, bro. Well, just, just you, like, forget uh, it. Eh? Just forget, forget it. it. The season, I was saying, the season's so long. So, like, even when it's so hard, like, mentally, right? Because, like, November, the boys aren't doing well. But it's hard not to get down. But you're like, well, a few games, few wins, what, three in a row. Now you're, like, back in the mix. Yeah. And it's Massive like, difference. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, now the boys are up. Deserve the weekend off next week. Yeah. Should be the week, but yeah. Are you guys yeah. going away? <laughs> going come away on, or? come on, man. What are you doing in your week off? Um, weekend off. Well, Cheltenham's on Friday. Oh, oh. <laughs> take your misses away, uh, man. We're, yeah, we're, so we're away. We're going. We're going to. Um, uh, we've got a like a retreat, spa retreat. Oh, yeah. So my parents going to come look after Charlie. Oh, um, so we'll go Friday night, Saturday night, and yeah. come back on Sunday. You only got one kid, eh? Just one. Yeah, baby number two could be on the way <laughs> after this trip, <laughs> eh? <Ooh. laughs> That's a bit cold, eh? Good <laughs> nah, good stuff. Yeah. So I might have to go to Cheltenham, then train to Leicester, and then hang well, on. and then find that your bags are outside yeah. the door. <laughs> <laughs> Locked door, eh? Right. Nah, yeah. So that would be cool, bro. It'd be, yeah. it'd be good time spending spend with her. We don't, you know, I mean, as Lima would know, you don't get much time to work on a relationship when you got when you got kids and yeah, you yeah, got yeah, two. Yeah. So yeah. lack of sleep is times ten. Yeah, I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, bro. We won't keep you any longer. Yeah. Thank you so much for having. Uh, no, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, man, it's actually yeah. been a really fun podcast. Well. Yeah, bro. It'll be it's sick. I better let you go see your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> hey, I just see your dad. It could be your dad. <laughs> Later, bro.